Hi everyone. So today I have someone incredibly inspiring for you to meet. This is Tracy Hall and Tracy Hall is part of the Who the Hell's Hamish story, which has had over 6 million downloads, downloads to yep. the podcast. So you may have actually come across this story, but Tracy is actually one of the victims. Now, the reason why I want to share this story with you is because of Tracy, actually, because her story is incredible, but it's her strength and determination and resilience, which is really important here. And so Tracy is going to share with you her story in her own words. And towards the end of this video, I'm going to share with you warning signs, advice, things that you need to watch out for so that you never become a victim of this type of crime. So Tracy, thank you so much for coming to share this story with me. And as I said, when I heard Tracy's story, I almost fell off my chair. Like I was just yeah. blown away. And you haven't done anything foolish or silly at all. Like when you told me your story, I was like, I could have very easily done exactly what you did. Can you explain to everyone who you are and, and yeah. what's happened? And I think you're right. I think um, the the outcome of this is that the, the knowledge that it could happen to anyone. Mm. So that's why I'm keen to, you know, share this story and, and help others. But um, I uh, I have unfortunately become Hamish McLaren's last um, victim um, in a, a very long-winded story about his crimes over the past um, six or seven years, but also spanning longer than that. Um, I met Hamish... Um, in uh, about March 2016 on a dating app. Um, he presented himself as a man uh, called Max DeVita. And so you didn't know who Hamish was? He's Ma Max DeVita? No. So we've been together for 16 months and we have a, a completely committed relationship. We had been away on holidays together. We were talking about buying a house. Um, you know, we were planning our future together. Mm. Um, I woke up one morning and um, and I hadn't heard from him in 24 hours, which was very odd. And then my girlfriend had sent, had called me and said, um, how are you? And I said, I, you know, I haven't heard from Max mm -hmm. in 24 hours. I'm really worried. Yeah. And she said, I've just seen something online. I'm going to send you the link and you need to call me back straight away. I sent the link and it, and it was him being arrested. And, it, you know, it, it sort of had this headline and, um, you know, I, I was like, the age was different, everything. I had to, I had to put all of the pieces of the puzzle together because everything he had told me in that eighteen month period was a complete lie. So, so, all right. So, next step was to find out what was going on. Like, yeah. who is Max Devito? Like, what's been going on, and what is what has he done that's so bad? Like, yeah. So, what 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 happened from there on? Uh, from from there, uh, I was given the number of the of the detective that had arrested him, mm -hmm. uh, and they called me back. And in the meantime, I'm just scrambling, just, you know, looking on Facebook for buddies that he went surfing with and trying to connect with them, LinkedIn, trying to find his his family members, just, you know, people that I'd met um, that were connected to him, trying to get their numbers through their mm. workplaces. In that time where I was frantically trying to find information, um, I'd managed to get in touch with his brother-in-law and I'd received a text back from him saying, Tracy, please call me on this number. Chris, and in brackets, he had written Hamish's brother-in-law. And that's when I called him and I just said, Chris, it's Hamish. And that's the first time I knew his name. So his detective. name wasn't even Max, it was no, Hamish. Nothing. His age was wrong, his background was wrong, his, um, his name was incorrect, he didn't have the job that he said he had. Everything he told me about his life and his world and everything I knew to be true was, in fact, completely incorrect and false. And you were together with him 16 months. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it wasn't like a three-month relationship. You yeah, know? yeah. Like he carried this you. on yeah. for a long time. Now, he not only did he defraud you romantically, but he also defrauded you financially. Yeah. And can you explain to me how this happened? Yeah. Um, and obviously share whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah. But because when I ask you questions, I'm like, but how did he get the money? And you tell me, I'm like, oh, my God, I could have so easily done that as yeah. well, you know. It was, um, I would say it was a probably, it was a very slow, a slow process. Mm. Planting um, seeds. Planting seeds. He gained my trust. The, the, the image that he portrayed and this person that he became for me, the Max Tavita that I knew, was a chief investment officer for a family office hedge fund. So there was this, there was a story that built over time and the, like countless conversations about, 
financial strategies mm. and superannuation and hedge funds and mm. all of this stuff that over a long period of time, you know, it becomes part of your conversation. Yeah. Say things like, you know, I just, I really want you to be financially independent. You work so hard and, mm. you know, just little comments and I guess it all just happened very slowly. Yeah, and yeah. You know, he he was very um, vocal about, it, you know, the banks and the superannuation and their fees to not rip you up and all of this, but not in relation to me, yeah. in relation to other conversations. So he started to almost become, like, protective of you. Yeah, yeah, and we were in a committed relationship. So he was, you know, I thought he was looking out for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was quite a long time before we even discussed anything to do yeah. with my really? superannuation or my savings or anything. And... Yeah, it just happened slowly and I guess at the end of the day I, I trusted him and I thought he was a professional in his field yeah. and I also thought he had my best interests at heart because we were sharing a life together. That's why it's so great that you were coming forward and sharing this story with people mm. and being open about it because there are so many people out there who have had this happen to them and like you said, too shamed, too embarrassed to come forward. I have had but, so yeah. many people mm. come up to me since I've decided to talk about it and to be honest it took me a year to decide to talk to Greg for the podcast he was Mm. you know I I knew he wanted to write the story through a friend of mine and I just I was so embarrassed and ashamed and you know and then one day I just woke up and I just felt stronger I don't know what it was it was probably just a combination of time and focusing on myself and and working through all the issues that I kind of experienced and all the emotions. Mm. And I woke up one morning and I thought, you know what? You know, he's not going to break me. Yeah. He doesn't deserve that privilege. Of all people, Mm. he's not going to be the one to do it. Yeah. And I just turned around one day and I thought, you know what? I'm going to talk to Greg and I'm going to get this podcast going because – there are so many people and, and what's happened as a consequence is the amount of people that have come up to me and said, this happened to me and I yeah. never told anybody yeah. and I feel so relieved that I can finally talk to someone. Before this happened to me, I hadn't really heard that many stories. Yeah, no, no. I, I think you were the first person I've ever heard like yeah. tell me this story. And what I love about your story is you've suffered hugely financially and I'll come to that in a second. And obviously you've had your heart completely betrayed. Um, but your story is not about wallowing in your own self pity. You've mm. pulled yourself together yeah. after like that natural grieving time, yeah. and you've used this horrible situation to um, rebuild yourself, pull yourself together, and get back on with it. But most importantly, and most like I think it, what is so impressive about you is you are openly sharing your experience to help other people, mm. to help guide other people, to help other people heal but also to help other people become more savvy and more switched on yeah. from these absolute, like, bottom-of-the-barrel criminals. Yeah. Um, so that is what I, I absolutely love about you. And I, I want to talk about the, your gratitude as well in a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. But do you mind if I ask, like, how much did you lose to I this? lost um, $317,000. Oh, my gosh. So was my whole career. So I've been working for... 21 years, so it was a combination of my superannuation, which was the majority, and then some savings that um, I had had, um, accumulated. So, yeah, it was my life savings. Now, can you tell me about how you have rebuilt yourself? Because this is what I think is really important. Um, We all suffer some sort of financial setback, whether it's something that gradually happens or something that happens out of the blue. But I think if anyone can show us how to do it (laughs) after what you've gone through, it's you. So can you talk to me about how you've done this and yeah. also about um, hot chips with chicken salt. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a couple of things. You know, when when this all happened, like I'm not going to deny it, I was the lowest I've ever course, been. yeah. You know, I was in a world of pain and I'd never experienced, you know, feeling so low. Yeah. And I think that's natural and I think you go through those periods and, you know, I, I'm a single mum mm-hmm. and... I think when you have to get out of bed every morning and make a little person their lunch and their breakfast, it, it gives you another reason to, you know, um, just get up every day. And I think that's an interesting concept is having something outside of yourself that requires more of you than you require of yourself. Yeah, you can put your energy and focus into work. Yeah, probably a good distraction. Work was, of course, a good distraction. Um, and during that time, um, I... 
there wasn't much I was doing other than just surviving, to be honest. Mm. But there was one thing that I did almost religiously every day and I forced myself to do it. It was not easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like okay. at my gratitude journal. Okay. And, um, and yeah, and some days I was scraping the bottom of the <laughs> barrel. Um, I, I remember one entrance, entry one day was I was just I was so down and I was sitting there at night going, what am I grateful for today? And it was hot chips with chicken salt. Which is my favourite thing in the whole world. It's actually my death row meal. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love it. <laughs> but it's so simple. Mm. And, you know. And this is the thing. It's sometimes the simplest things in life that are the most beautiful things. Yeah. Life. And I just, you know, I look back on that time in my journal and I just, I realise how incredibly low I was. But just that simple thing of finding at least just one thing that was good in every day. Mm. And, you know, over time it got more profound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that and I and I think you know resilience is a muscle that you can build. Mm. Um, not that you want to face practice. Yeah. loads of adversity in your yeah. life, but um, you know I've had a, a few a few practice runs before yeah. before this had happened, and um, and I think just I think hope is an is mm. a really interesting concept because if you can find something to be hopeful for, like you know that your belief that. Tomorrow's going to be a better day. Yeah. So, like, you're with, like, where to for you now? Like, what are you doing? What are you focusing on? Mm. Are you open to rebuilding? Are you open to falling in love again? Are you trusting in the universe? Like, yeah. like how, is, how are you coming out of this more resilient and stronger and yeah. smarter? Yeah, I think you're right. Like, you know, no amount of time is going to be enough um, for, for what Hamish put everyone through. Mm. But that, that door is closed now. It's been done. And I think it was a, it was a great outcome. Um, for me, the future, like I feel so, it, this is going to sound really strange, mm -hmm. but I feel actually quite grateful for going through this. Like I know no, that's no, no, weird. That sound, no, 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 absolutely not. Because sometimes some of the most horrible things that have happened to me have been the biggest blessings in yeah. disguise. So like, that doesn't sound yeah, weird I guess, at all. I, don't, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's the best thing that happened to me, <laughs> but I would say that I, 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 feel, I just feel grateful because it's opened, you know, I... I definitely see the world differently now. Well, you've experienced a profound growth and awareness yeah. and enlightenment that has come from this horrendous experience. Yeah. And you have to believe that people are good because they are. Yeah. And, you know, for me, not only trusting other people, but finding that trust in myself because for a long time I was like, how, how did I miss this? Mm -hmm. You know, how did my intuition not kick in? How did I like what happened and just not even trusting yeah. my own judgment which was probably the hardest thing well i'm a financial planner i've been in the industry for oh gosh i think maybe 19 years or something like that and i've run my own business for 14 or 15 years and your story as i said i could have very easily fallen into that into yeah. that trap but look what i would like to do is now share with everyone warning signs look for like some basic rules to follow so that you know if something's not right you quickly can smell a rat mm -hmm. so the first thing is is obviously you never share bank details particularly pin numbers um you never give anyone access to any of your online accounts and of course i'm sure you don't no, do that you can do that I, yeah so this is how clever this guy is the next thing is is you whenever someone is giving you financial advice or telling you that they need to invest you need to invest with them check their credentials um, ask for their financial services license. Every time you see one of my financial videos, you would see a general advice warning and you will see my financial planning license listed below of every single financial video. If you are a financial planner and you are licensed to give advice, you have a license number. So look for qualifications. Also ask for their credentials. Where did they study? Like what, what you know, certificates, what diplomas, what degrees do they have? Understand where, how educated they are thing is is um when it comes to investment advice when it, i can't and this is why i can never tell someone invest here or there i have to produce a 40 page document called a statement of advice if i am going to recommend someone invest in a certain way or the per, per, a certain investment strategy so if someone is giving you advice if they don't give you a statement of advice that is a red flag you need to have a legal document and these documents that we create as financial planners are legally binding we are legally responsible for every single word that goes in there which is why they're 40 pages and they take a while to complete so if someone's going to give you financial advice 
get a get a documented, ask for a product disclosure document, ask for a statement of advice, and read all the fine print. Again, if you don't see or hear this, something's not right. Next thing is, is never write a blank check. Whenever it comes to opening up a, you know, an investment portfolio for a client or opening up a, an account for a client, it's never in my name, it's always in the client's name. So I'll open up a fresh bank account for them in their name. I don't have any access to transact on their account. And if it ever is opened up with a check, the check is even in the client's name. So it will be to XYZ dash and then their name. That means that whoever gets their hands on that check cannot use it because it's not in their name. So that is incredibly important. Never give someone a blank check that doesn't have your name on it because that's when they can start depositing it wherever they like. The next thing is always invest in your own name. Never give someone a blank check and never let someone open up a bank account in their name with your money. Money should be deposited into an account in your name. This is incredibly important because if you don't do that, that person has access to that money and they can do what they like and disappear with that money, but incredibly important. The next thing is, is never invest in something you don't understand. Sure, you might initially not understand what the investment is and that's why you need to go away and do your research, talk to other people, bounce your, you know, what the idea is of other people who are qualified and experienced investors and get their feedback. But at the end of the day, if you still don't understand what the investment's about, do not go ahead until you either understand it or decide it's, whether it's right or wrong for you. But if you don't understand it, simply say no. There'll be plenty of other investment opportunities that come your way. Which brings me to my next point, trust your gut. If something doesn't sound right or sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So I would always make sure if something doesn't sit right in your stomach, you've got a funny feeling, hold off. And you know what? If you hold off and say to that person, look, I'm going to think about it a bit longer, their reaction will actually tell you a lot about their incentives and if there's any conflicts. Because if, if they are a legitimate investment, they'll say like, okay, no problem. Of course, I don't want you to invest in something you don't understand. And me as a financial planner, I would never let a client sign any document if I suspect they don't understand what I'm recommending because they're not going to see the benefits of it. But if you if they start to react badly that you haven't made a decision or you know they get angry or frustrated, that's not alarm bells. Something's not right. And then the final thing is check your bank accounts and your investments and your superannuation accounts. Check all the balances, check where the money's invested, but most importantly, check the transactions. There may have been a fraudulent transaction on your account that dates back a couple of months ago. But if you don't regularly check them, you could very easily miss that and that person gets away with it and can go and do this to other people. So I recommend on a regular basis, you go into your accounts and make sure that they're being managed properly, that they're invested properly and all your transactions are your transactions, not other people playing around with your money because that is just absolutely wrong. All right, thank you so much for coming it's in so and sharing fun. this story I wish, with you. I wish I had have met you before <laughs> all of this happened. I mean, honestly, if I had have had a financial advisor, which I absolutely should have had at the time, this wouldn't have happened because I would have bounced the idea off my advisor and they would have smelt the rat that I couldn't. Well, you have a financial planner now and she I sounds do. like she's doing she's a fantastic amazing. job. I love her. And she's helping you rebuild your life yep. and that makes me so happy because I yep. know you are in actually very good hands now. Yeah, yeah. I am. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in. And yeah. If anyone is interested in hearing about Tracy's story, I will link all the amazing podcasts in the video description box below. And for anyone that you think has experienced something like this or needs to listen to the warning signs at the end of this video, please make sure you forward this video to them or go and share it on social media. We need to make more people aware of these types of people that are out there and the very manipulative, clever, deceiving tricks that they use to lure people in. Yeah. And all right, everyone, make sure you go and check out Tracy's Instagram account because I'm really hoping Tracy's going to put together a book sharing her experience and her story with everyone because this is something that people need to be aware of. So check out chicken, hot chips with chicken yeah, salt, hot chips with chicken which salt. I now feel like going and getting Let's some. Let's go get some. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> in the <Marines>. yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, ciao for now. Thanks for watching.